So here is um, uh, GAMS program. This is the correction of the assignment concerning the first computable general equilibrium model I asked you to do. Um, so I started uh, the program with uh, comments between instructions dollar on text and dollar of text. So this is a model that I designed with um, Yvan de Creux. Uh, and uh, here you've got uh, the declarations of parameters. Um, uh, and uh, of course, um, there is nothing uh, uh, difficult here because it's all the parameters that are necessary for the uh, program. Um, so you've got uh, technical parameters like alpha and uh, A0, which is the initial, the total productivity of factors. But you also have uh, parameters concerning exogenous variables like uh, supply of labor and supply of capital. And you have initial value for the variables of the model. Um, well, you have only two data to enter for this model from the social accounting matrix. It's the supply of labor and the supply of capital. And then uh, you uh, must normalize prices. So I remind you that normalizations, it's a change of uh, unit for each good uh, that is uh, in the model. So in this model, you have the output uh, price P and you have two primary factors uh, capital price R and a labor price W. So you change the unit for a quantity. Uh, the new unit is the, the quantity of each of these goods that you've got for uh, one uh, dollar or euro depending on the unitary monetary unit that you have adopted. Then the calibration, uh, it's an important part of the program because you must respect a specific order. Why? Because here, the first three equations, uh, you've got uh, something which comes from the data that you have entered within the, the program because you have a supply of labor and supply of capital and in the model you have and two equations which are KD is equal to KS and LD is equal to LS. So if you have entered data for LS and KS, you can calibrate KD0 and LD0. Uh, and then you have also entered uh, a value for R0 and W0. So if you look at the model, you can calibrate INC0 because INC in the model is equal to WLS uh, plus R times KS. So you can calibrate INC0. You follow the, the model. Uh, and then if you have a value for INC0, you can calibrate C0 because in the model you have the equation P times C is equal to INC. So you can calibrate C0 it is INC0 over P0. Then you can calculate, you can calibrate uh, Y0 is equal to C0 because in the model you have the equation Y is equal to C. It's the uh, market equilibrium for the for goods. And then you can calibrate alpha because you have uh, in the model the demand for capital, which is uh, R times KD is equal to alpha times P times Y. So you can calibrate alpha. Be sure that you have a parenthesis at the denominator, because if not, you can have uh, one term of these products, which is at the numerator instead of being at the denominator. Then you can calibrate the total productivity of factors and you can calibrate Leon zero, which is the initial value for the Leon variable. Uh, so in the model, the Leon is uh, positioned on the uh, labor market equilibrium. So you can write this Leon zero is equal to LD zero minus LS. But of course, you could also have and a value of zero for Leon zero. Then you declare variables. Uh, then you initialize each variable 
So it means that you give uh, a value uh, at this uh, stage of the program. Uh, so each variable has a value which is its initial value. So you understand why I use uh, the same uh, annotation for a variable and a parameter. Uh, but of course the parameter is ended with uh, zero uh, and why zero is a parameter why is a variable this is why i have to specify a suffix which is dot l which means the current value of variable y is equal to y zero and then you've got declarations of equation don't forget a comment you see that the annotations of equations it's eq underscore y so it's a specific variable it is uh, the name of the variable which is determined by this equation of course um, uh, it can be misleading because in fact uh, when you will solve the model uh, all variables will be uh, determined simultaneously but you have to think about uh, one equation is for the determinations of a specific variable. Uh, so you see that you have the, the, the program with Leon, which is uh, on the labor market equilibrium. I defined a model which I, I call macro, uh, and it, is, uh, it consists in all equations which are uh, in the, the file. Uh, and I also define the numeraire because uh, you have, uh, in fact, one uh, variable. Uh, you have one more variable as compared to the number of equations. So you have to fix uh, one uh, price. And so the numeraire is the price of labor, the initial price of labor. Then you ask for a, a solve. Uh, without any shock, so it's just to uh, check that the model has been well calibrated. So here, uh, this is to uh, ask for a solve, and we will check that the in in initial infusibility is uh, zero. Uh, then I change, I implement the shock. This is uh, an augmentation of the labor supply by 10%. Um, so uh, what I'm doing here is that uh, this is a buffer parameter because, uh, in fact, if you ask for a displays of the labor supply at the end of the program, you will have the final value of the labor supply. You will not have the initial value. So a buffer parameter, this is uh, called ls underscore for the name of the variable or the name of the parameter uh, followed by underscore. This is just to stock uh, the initial value of this parameter. Uh, and so I write ls underscore is equal to ls. So I give the value, the initial value of ls in ls underscore. And then I change the, the value of ls and I ask for a solve. So it means that uh, one equation will not be respected because the labor supplies has uh, changed and so GAMS will uh, search for new values of all uh, endogenous variables in order for each equation to be uh, strictly respected. And uh, once uh, it will have solved the model, it will calculate uh, parameters which is the gross rates of GDP, the gross rate of output price, and the gross rate of capital remuneration. Of course, you can ask for other uh, calculation. Um, uh, just here, I will check that uh, I will ask for a display of uh, the value of the parameters. I also want to check that the final value of the Leon is uh, equal to zero. So what I'm doing is that I type leon.l. So I ask for a display of the current value of the variable leon. Uh, this is to check that uh, the final value of leon is equal to zero in order to check that uh, the Valras law is respected. So I ask, I press run. Here I am in the process window. 
So the first shock, you see that the initial infusibility is zero. So it means that the model was well calibrated. Then you've got uh, a second solve with an initial infusibility of 1,400. And in nine iterations, GAMS has found a, a solution, that is to say value for the eight variables, such that all equations of the model is, are respected. In fact, the infusibility is very close to zero. So uh, I can look at the results of... So if you double click on the left part of the dot .lst, you may have, for example, the statistics of the model. So you check here that there are eight free variables and eight independent equations. Okay, so here you see that initially you have eight equations but nine variables, but one uh, variable is not free. So uh, you have a, a square system because you have eight free variables and eight independent equations. The results, well, you have uh, growth rates of GDP, which is close to 7%, uh, a gross rate of output price uh, of 2.9%. Uh, so it means that with an increase of labor supply, you have uh, uh, economic growth, but with economic growth, you have inflation, some inflation, and you have an increase in the remunerations of capital by 10%. So it's normal because in fact, each unit of capital is more productive because there are more workers, okay? So um, on the contrary, if you would have an increase in the stock of capital with the same quantity of uh, labor, uh, it would mean that each worker has uh, at its uh, disposal more units of capital, more machines, more trucks, more tools. So it means that each worker would be more productive. Uh, so it's normal. Uh, in fact, if the, the quantity of the other factor augments, it means that the productivity and the remuneration of a factor augments. And uh, you have uh, a Leon.L, which is equal to zero or very close to zero. If I look at uh, here the equation, so if you double click here on equation, you see that you do not have any infusibility because here you have a value for the left hand side and you do not have infusibility because if you add uh, infusibility you would have uh, four stars and a level of infusibility uh, on each equation okay so on all equations of the model you do not have any infusibility this is the first solve so it's normal if you look at the second solve so here I click, I double click on equation. And so here you've got uh, here uh, an infusibility because here the labor supplies has changed. So the formations of income, you have an infusibility, which is here um, mentioned, an infusibility of 700. Uh, so you have four star, you have an infusibility, and then on the equilibrium on labor market, you have also an infusibility because the labor supply has augmented by 10%, so you have an infusibility. Um, well, uh, so you have, uh, I hope, understood how to design this very simple uh, model, uh, computable general equilibrium.